Welcome everybody back to another Facebook Live at the First Tee of Northwest Arkansas. I'm Coach Chris. I have Coach Madison, Coach Lee, and Coach Ethan here with me. Um, we're excited to be back again today. We are in the beautiful indoor facility today. It was just a little cool today for us to be outside, although hopefully in the afternoon it will warm up and we'll start seeing some people coming out and hitting some range balls and, and putting and working on their golf game. And we hope to see you out here soon, okay? Come on out and practice before our uh, before our classes and our programming begins again. Uh, a little bit, little bit about a core value that we want to talk about today. Uh, we're going to go over judgment. Uh, in, in golf, you got to use pretty good judgment, whether you're uh, hitting some putts or chips or on the golf course when you're hitting your full swings, you've got to make good decisions. And we always talk about, well, what kind of decisions do, do you have to make on the golf course? We know good decisions, but what do you got to think about? You got to think about your wind, what club you want to use, um, how, how far in distance the ball needs to travel, what direction the ball needs to travel in. So a lot of things that go on through your mind right before you're able to hit the shot. And, and for those that haven't played a whole lot, it may take you a little bit to kind of get that. For, but as you continue to play and get a little bit better, it'll only take you maybe a second or two to make those decisions. And, and remember, if we can make good decisions on the golf course, we know we can make good decisions at home. Uh, or anywhere else that we may be, especially during this time. We want to make good decisions by uh, making sure we're washing our hands properly, making sure that if we have to sneeze, we're sneezing into our elbow or uh, using that hand sanitizer, whatever it may be. So we're going to go into, uh, into our golf skill today. We're going to be working on putting and we're going to be working on chipping. So first things first, we're going to make a good decision and warm up our bodies. Okay, so I'm going to bring in Coach Madison. So take it away, Coach Madison. All right, hey guys. So uh, we're gonna be working on short game, which means we uh, are going to need to be aware of our bodies and be aware of our balance and where our feet are positioned. And also when you work on short game, your lower back can hurt sometimes. So we're gonna address that as well. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a club or a broom, like I said last time, whatever you have at your house. And you can just take that club straight out with your arm straight and just kind of twist to stretch out that, that back, especially that lower back. You don't want to go super fast. Just get a nice stretch in the back. All right, and then um, to also stretch out our lower back, you can. I'm gonna set my club down. I'm gonna take my hands up in the air like this and stretch really tall, and then bend down to stretch my lower back and hold it for about 10 seconds. And then I'm going to come back up and I'm going to do a quick balance stretch real quick where I can just stand on one foot because you need good balance in golf. I'm just going to hold it. You can stick your arms out. You can grab your ear if you want. And if you want to make it harder on yourself, you can also reach down with the opposite hand and try to touch the ground. And try to practice your balance. So I'm going to do it on the other leg now. I'm going to reach down. <laughs> All right, and those are a few things that you can do before you get into your short game um, and start practicing. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to work on our putting, and, and there's uh, three different things we're going to work on today. We're actually going to be working on different grips. Um, everybody's, everybody has a different putting stroke. Everybody uses different grips, and when we want you guys to discover these different kinds of uh, grips that you can use when you're practicing putting and find out what works best for you, which grip will get the ball in the hole, basically in the least amount of strokes, okay? So if Coach Madison and Coach Lee can come back out, they're gonna show you three different grips that you can try out next time you come out and practice. All right, so we are gonna do three different grips, uh, like Coach Chris said, and we're gonna do three different distances as well. It's important just to, you know, experiment See what you like on the golf course and see what fits you best because everybody's different everybody has a different feel um, so our first grip we're going to do is just regular uh oh shoot, what's the name? Conventional. conventional conventional yes just, just regular standard. conventional standard yeah um and that's where your if you're a right hand your right hand will be closer to the the bottom of the club and your left hand will be um closer to the butt of the club or if you're left-handed, it would be vice versa with your left-handed more down the shaft and your right hand um, closer to the butt. So I'm right-handed, so my right hand's gonna be on top, my left hand's gonna be on bottom. And I even put my pinky just to kind of overlap right here when I'm putting. 
Um, but that's just a conventional grip. And Coach Lee's going to demonstrate cutting it from three feet right here. But the conventional. Um, now, do you have space between your hands? Do you put a lot of space between the, your two hands when you do your grip, or do you have them close together? Um, no, I don't put space. Uh, the space can sometimes make your hands, like, it can mess up the feel of your hands, it can mess up the feel of the cut, so you don't want space in between. Nice. Very nice. How does nice. that feel, Coach Lee? Yeah, great. In fact, I didn't feel it at all because when you hit it right, you don't feel it. Yeah. yeah. You want to take another shot? Sure. If I miss it, it'll be Coach Madison's fault. <laughs> <laughs> You'll make it. You're putting peer pressure on <laughs> oh. oh. Good putt. Good putt. So, do you feel like you would take that out on the golf course and be successful with that grip? Yes. Okay. Cool. I like it. It was comfortable. All right, so our next grip, we're going to be putting from six feet. And when you're moving the different distances, you want to make sure you're being aware of how far you're taking it back and how far you're taking it through. At the first tee, we like to say toe to toe. Um, so, you know, you're not going to putt the same from every distance. So make sure you're remembering that when you move from, uh, from different distances. So our next um, putting grip is going to be cross hand. And that is exactly how it sounds. You're going to switch your hands. So I'm, again, right handed. So my left hand is now going to move um, towards more towards the down uh, part of the club, and then my right hand is going to be near the butt or the bottom of the club. Um, if you're left-handed, you would switch. Same thing. And just like Coach Lee said, you don't want any gap between your hands. You want them to be pretty close together. So this is uh, the grip we call cross hand. Now, do I grip with my player tight, loose, medium? How do I, when I'm going from different distances, is my grip, grip different on how tight I, how firm I hold the club? That's a really good question. Um, it really just depends on you, and that's another thing that you need to experiment with. I know that when people tend to grip really tight, they hit it a little bit harder. So it's just something you need to experiment with and see what, what works for you. If I miss it, we'll win. Yeah. <laughs> Try to cross me. Yeah, I am. Oh, I always okay. have to get it right. Yep. I have to put it right and then put my hand so that that faces it. Do you like it a little bit less than the conventional? Yes. Okay. I do. See, I feel like this oh. one is straight and this one is, is yeah. not. And I don't have my rhythm in my hand. <laughs> All right, so the last one we're going to do is a little bit of a weird one, but it's called the claw. And so uh, the claw, you're... Um, your left hand, if you're a right-handed person like me, your left hand's going to be more close uh, to the butt of the club like our conventional was. And then you're going to make kind of like a snapping claw motion right here and put the thumb underneath the grip and then your fingers just lightly rest on top of it. So this is called the claw because of, because of what it looks like. And then um, this is mainly just to get your right hand out of it. A lot of times when our, our strongest hand um, is, you know, the one maybe pushing a little bit harder, and it can affect our putting, not in the best way. So you want um, your, your right hand or your strong hand, if you're left-handed, to be um, just barely touching, and that just lets you, um, your left hand, take a little bit more control and get your right hand from pushing it too far left or too far right. So Coach Lee is going to demonstrate that now. The claw. It always makes me hungry because I think a lot of things. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. nice spot. How did that feel? Now, I like it. Yeah? I like it a lot, but if I use it a lot, then my hands get tired because I'm not used to it. So by the end of the round, I'll switch back to my other. Gotcha. But I like it because the back of my hand will guide to where I want it to go. Yeah. Do you want to hit one more? Sure. I think that's oh, the one. I think that's, I think that's the one for you. <laughs> yeah. So of the three, which one is your favorite? My favorite is the first one, the standard conventional grip, but I also like the claw too. When I'm not putting well with my old regular, I'll switch to the claw awesome. and then get back into my old one again. Yeah. It's never the putter's fault. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to throw it over to Coach Chris and uh, Coach Ethan to show you um, some short game uh, chipping tips. 
Yeah, okay, so we're gonna be, I'll be moving the camera here in just a second to show you a couple different chipping options that you may have, and we've had people ask, well, what club do I need to use the chip with? Um, you can use whatever club you want that you're comfortable with, but we wanna kinda give you some guidance on maybe when to use that sand wedge or, or lob wedge or, or whatever it may be, or a gap wedge, compared to like an eight iron or nine iron. So I'm gonna move the camera over so that we can see Coach Ethan. So, Coach Ethan, um, what club do you have in your hand right now? I have an 8-iron right okay, now. Okay, he's got an 8-iron. So that, that tells me that he's more than likely going to be hitting that bump and run shot that we worked on um, last Tuesday. So my guess is you're going to go for a little bit further shot. So if yeah. you notice, he's going to go to the far pit or the far flag. Um, he's got a lot of green to work with, so we want to get this ball rolling pretty quickly, right? Okay, and you're just going to take just a normal – what kind of kind of kind of a putting stroke? Maybe a little bit bigger than a putting stroke, and just let that ball roll toward the cup. Exactly. I don't want to take too big of a swing at this. It's just like a putt, just to get it on the green and rolling as soon as possible. And it just runs back there. Yeah. Very nice. So, yeah, I, you didn't. That ball didn't fly very far. It probably went three, four feet in front of you, and then probably rolled another. 25, 30 feet. So that's what that shot's kind of designed to do. You want to take kind of kind of similar to your putting stroke, using those shoulders, right? Exactly. Um, keeping that club face pretty square, pretty uh, pretty square towards your target. And I, li I like that. That was very nice. Okay, so um, you want to switch over to a wedge? I have a question. What yeah. if the pin were longer? Would I swing harder or would I pick a different club? That's your option. I mean, if, if, if the pin's a little bit further away, you could either swing just a little bit harder or you have an eight iron, maybe you go to a seven iron, that ball's probably gonna roll even further. Okay, and you're still probably gonna have somewhere right around that same landing spot, be my guess. Okay, All right. yep. All right, we're gonna switch to a wedge. Now, hitting this, this chip shot with the wedge, the ball is gonna stop a little bit quicker. So it's actually gonna fly in the air, probably a little bit closer to your target, right? Yep. Okay, but it's more than likely it's gonna stop because it's getting up in the air a little bit higher. So if you notice, he's got a wedge, which is a little bit more lofty club, so that ball should be getting in the air, and he would probably more so use this uh, club when he doesn't have a lot of green to work with. So he's gonna to go to this, this cup right here that doesn't have a flag in it, and uh, where do you think your landing spot may be? My landing spot's gonna be about just over halfway. Okay, so probably somewhere right around in here? Yes, okay. just because it won't run out as much and it'll sit a little softer. Okay, yep. <laughs> Missed it that one but, a little bit, yep. got right under that it. That rough's a little thick right, right around there. And that's another reason that if you have a longer shot that you would want to hit a higher loft or a lower loft good club, just because it'll run a bit more. Even if you miss it, it's just like that. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> Rough, real thick right there. Yeah. So as you can see, as you can see, that wedge is a little bit tougher to hit through that rough, okay? Because that rough is kind of stopping that club and it's not allowing that ball to pop off compared to that eight iron. So this is actually pretty good feedback for you right here. Okay? So let's see if we can hit third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. <laughs> no? Yep. All right. Well, I know where I need to work on my game right now. So, yeah. so and that's the thing. Like, that kind of tells him, hey, I need to work on my wedge chip shots a little, you know, a little bit more. Um, of course, this grass isn't as forgiving as maybe the grass out on the golf course is a little bit, a little bit tougher to hit through. Um, but is there any reason why you maybe should open or close the club face there when is. you're hitting this shot? So, say uh, there was less green than this, and maybe I needed to get over a little water hazard or a little bunker in front of me, I would open the club face a bit more to get it up in the air and just so it would hit and land softer. Or if I were to close the face a bit more, it wouldn't get as high and it would run a bit more than it is just on a normal shot. So what would, an open, if, if you could show the viewers, what would an open club face look like? Would the, would the club be kind of pointed more toward, yes. the, toward the sky? So this, this is where your club is square when it's like this, when you open it, you have the club face pointing more towards the sky, just so 
the club can go right under the ball and it can get up in the air. Whenever you close it, this is back to square, you would turn it down a bit more and you would usually push your hands a little forward just to get that club going down and kind of pinching the ball more so and going right under it. So last question would be, should you like get your grip and then go on ahead and turn it open or should you turn it open and then take your grip? Turn it open and then take your grip from okay. there because if you turn your grip and then like that, when you come back, if your wrists are timed perfectly, if you're gonna hit it just out, you would hit a normal shot. Okay. So you wanna make sure if you wanna open it, you open it, then regrip it and then take your swing. Or if you wanna close it, close it a bit, then regrip it, just so you have that actual angle of the club face. Yeah, so that's that's important. Make sure that you do those first two things first, where, whether it be open or close it or neutral, uh, and then take your grip. So that's yeah. important to know. Um, so yeah, so on the on the chip shot with the wedge, try uh, with a little bit closer, maybe opening up the club face a little bit. You can also try a little bit further away and close that club face down where you're de-lofting the club, and that ball's probably gonna run out more so like a pitching wedge or a nine iron. You're tur basically turning the sand wedge into a pitching wedge or nine iron. Exactly. Okay, but with your eight iron or seven iron, you still want that square club face, okay? So, um, I guess that's it for today. I hope you guys learned something new with the three um, with the three different grips that we, you would use uh, when you're putting. Hope you learned something new when you're out chipping. Hope you, hopefully we're gonna continue to use good judgment. These right here, these little chip shots and the putts, you gotta use that good judgment, make the good decision on which, which club to select. Do you want the club face open or closed? Do you, want, um, do you need to know your distance and direction? Um, and again, use, make good decisions when you're at home, when you're at school, um, anywhere you go. So thank you again for coming uh, or for showing up today for our Facebook Live. We appreciate you guys and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.